Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Um, my name is Marcos Correa. Um, for those who know, my, my husband, Christopher Brown, unfortunately he is not able to join us at the moment. He is currently busy fulfilling du daddy duty and um, with our daughter, Harper, who is taking a little bit more time away from us this evening, but definitely um, he's with us in spirit and, and sends his uh, devotions to everyone. Um, I'm very glad and, 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 and honored to take the opportunity to, to be with you all today. Um, when you're viewing this, it should be Friday, March 3rd. And um, I think this is kind of the perfect time for us to, to focus on not only everything that we did this past week, so, you know, but also re take a time to reflect and, and really think back on the ups and the downs, because I'm sure there were many in, um, of the past week, and really now try to, try to get ourselves grounded for this devotion, take a step back. I, I encourage and welcome everyone to take a few seconds to close your eyes. Let's pause and think of everything that we did this week, everything that we felt, and how hopefully we did it with Christ at the center. And if we did not, what could we do to to recenter ourselves. So let's just take a few seconds. In this reading, we're going to be reading Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, as well as Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. I will take a few minutes now to, to read the scriptures and continue the conversation. So scripture reads, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tilt it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Genesis chapter three. The first sinned and its punishment. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired and to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. As I mentioned um, earlier, I might have not mentioned earlier, but the, the, the um, question that we should be reflecting on this week is who will listen, who will you listen to? And like to continue the conversations that our community members, Christine and Elise spoke to earlier this week. And I think the, the scripture as it was read today is, should be very familiar to us, but it also is a good reminder of the temptations that we have before us. Um, I asked you all to re take a pause and reflect over the past week and think about all the temptations that you might have had. Think about how you might have been swayed otherwise. And did you lose sight of your own self values, your own inner self? 
or what caused you to go astray. I think it's natural, We've all, we, we all do that. But it's also important for us to recognize when we have um, those moments of temptation or we are embarking on journeys that don't take us down the paths that, that we know we should or, or that we, we, we could be taking. Um, I like part of the, the devotional. There is a, a section of the devotional that, that says, um, consider what voices might be pulling, your, pulling you toward more poison than medicine. Um, that was mentioned earlier this week. I never heard of that, of that pulling you towards po more poison than medicine. Um, I'm a firm believer of medicines <laughs> for your health for um, whatever situations may be. But we also need to understand just as much as we need medicines for our, our own physical systems, we need medicines for our mental health, but we also need medicines for our spiritual health. We need to, in order for us to be grounded, in order for us to really feel that we are spiritually connected and that we have Christ in the center of us, we need to be focusing on what medicine we should be tapping into. Um, continue on this this part of this um, this devotion. It says, consider what voices might be pulling you toward more poison than medicine. Carve out time for silence, that the still small voice of God may come into fuller focus. Listen for God, who is always right there at the center of your heart, inviting you into a life. Of belovedness, even as you travel east of Eden. Taking time to pause, taking time to be silent, to be still. It's not hard, <laughs> as I said. You know, Christopher's upstairs right now with our daughter, who is, who is, you know, just being a, a, a rambunctious three-year-old. But we still need to make time to be still and to allow ourselves to tap into the medicine that is going to feed our soul, that are going to feed our, our spiritual center. So I end with that, and I just say I'd like to close by maybe saying a quick prayer. Um, and we wish to close our eyes. Um, Heavenly Father, we ask that you please continue to guide us on this Lenten journey. We thank you for the obstacles that you might have you know, given before us this past week for the ups, for the downs, but we also thank you because we are reminded of your love and your, your passion for what you have given us and what you are, um, what we should be working towards. Um, we ask this in your most holy name and pray for uh, continued health and happiness and a fruitful Lenten journey. Amen. Thank you, everyone.